Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Medzon African Motives, still on working on industrial electronics and two uh, from the present paper, which was written in April 2021 uh, as a revision uh, towards the exams, which are ahead of time. Uh, we are going to work on question number six and question number seven in this platform. We're just going to combine them. As you can see, question number seven is nothing. So just going to combine everything so that it can be easier for us. Okay. So without more wasting much time, let us focus on question six. On 6.11, we are asked to draw a neat labeled sketch of a construction of a light dependent resistor, which is the LDR technology. This is the construction. It's not a circuit symbol, but the construction. All right, so I'm not gonna waste much time. Let us quickly see how it is being constructed. So this is the construction part. Uh, don't forget to mention everything here. Uh, your electrode, the lower electrode, uh, the upper electrode, and also the insulating plate and the photo uh, conductor. That is uh, simply what you needed for you to obtain five marks in just like that, guys. So as you can see, guys, it's uh, actually easier. Make sure that your construction part, your diagram is clearly drawn so that you obtain uh, full marks. All right, the six point one two is now to explain the operating principle of the LDR in question six point one. One, how does it operate? Okay, an LDR is actually when incident light falls on the device, when light is falling on the device, the resistance decreases, causing a current to flow through a device. So it actually works with the light. That is why we're saying it's light dependent the resistor. It depends on light. So Everything that you, whatever you're supposed to mention, it has to do with the light there. So when the light falls on the device, its resistance is going to decrease, take note this part, causing a current to flow through the device. Just like that, you can obtain a total of two marks if you can do that in exam. All right, 6.2, show by means of a neat graph the difference between un, yeah, under dumping, sorry, that is under dumping, over dumping, and critical dumping. Okay, the dumping part, how are you going to show them in terms of the graphs? Okay, so we've got them here, uh, where we've got the critical dumping shown here, under dumping shown here, and over dumping here. So guys, as you can see, it's an ugly diagram, but that's how it looks like if you're dealing with uh, dumping. All right, the 6.3, an amplifier, operational amplifier is an input impedance of 600 ohms and is connected to a 10 ohm speak. Take note, guys. Take note what you are given here. If an amplifier is an input impedance, which is the resistance that you have of 600 ohms, so you've got a uh, input impedance. Let's just uh, take down. I'm just going to, okay, let me increase this. I'm just going to write it aside here. So, so I've got the input impedance of 600 ohms. That is the input impedance of 600 ohms is connected to a speaker. When connected to a speaker, the always, guys, a speaker is an output device. So if it is an output device, that means this is the output impedance that we have. So we've got R out for the output, which is 10 ohms. Okay, let's see the other part that you're given. Calculate the voltage across the speaker. Take note, guys. Calculate the voltage across the speaker, which is the output voltage, because we say a speaker is an output device. So they need you to calculate the output voltage. So you do not have the output voltage, but we are given that if the input current, you are told that this is the input current, it may not exceed two milliamps and a gain of 40 decibels. So you're given the input current and the gain. All right, so the input current definitely goes in with the input impedance, which is of two milliamps. Remember, milli means times 10 to the power of minus three. And we are given a gain of 40 decibels. So this is what we are actually given. So from this information, the question is for you to calculate the output voltage. Okay, um, this type of equation, guys, actually needs you to play around with it uh, so that you can be able to answer the, 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 the question. Because here, 
we are given the input consideration, which is complete here for the input impedance, input current, we do not have the power. Here, we do not have, we do we're just given one value, but we are given the gain, remember. Remember that our gain is taken from the formula 10, the logarithm of P out over P in. That is what we have there. So all you need is to substitute, uh, but we need to have the input power first. We given resistance and current, how do you calculate power? Power is going to be equivalent to current in squared times the resistance because we are given current and resistance. So it's going to be input current squared times the input impedance. So that's our P in, which is two times 10 to the power of minus three squared. Remember your current is two milliamps times the impedance of 600. So by doing this, we can be able to calculate the, out, uh, the input power that we are going to use now. All right, so let's check from our calculator. When I have brackets here, that's two times 10 to the power of uh, minus three, like this, close the bracket squared times 600. So you're gonna have um, two comma four times 10 to the power of minus three. Okay, that's two comma four times 10 to the power of minus three watts or 2,4 milliwatts. Remember I said times 10 to the power of minus three means milli. So you can even write this as 2,4 milliwatts if you want, but just leave it like that. Okay, since you are going to use this value later on. Okay, let me just divide here so that I can do uh, something better. All right, from this part, take note, we actually need to calculate the output, which is the voltage, the output voltage that you are supposed to have. So let us take back to the formula now because we have the gain. So at least we can substitute here. Our gain is 40 decibels. So 40 is equivalent to 10, the logarithm of P out, which is the one that we do not have, but we do have the input power, which is 2,4 times 10 to the exponent or to the power of minus three. Okay, so how do I remove this 10 actually? Remember, these are logarithms. So I have to know that this is actually in base of 10. Okay, whenever you're dealing with a log and the base is not given, you are in base of 10. But to remove this 10 that is multiplying here, this 10 that is multiplying, you simply have to divide by 10 both sides. By doing this, this can cancel. That's 10 into 40, which is 4, is equivalent to the logarithm of P out over 2,4 times 10 to the power of minus 3 in base of 10. Now from our logarithms, we have the known the introduction of the anti-log whereby we know that if we are given the logarithm of A in base of B, which is equal to C, it's going to be written as A is equivalent to B to the exponent of C. So that is what we have here. A is the number that is affected by the log, which is this part here. This is our A. The B is the best, which is the 10. The C is the answer, which is our answer here is four. So taking this part, we're going to have A to the exponent of a is equal to b to the exponent of c. So our a, we say it is this part. So this part here that we see of p naught, which is p out over, all right, over 2,4 times 10 to the power of minus 3 is equivalent to, that is our a. b, that is our base, which is 10. So it's equivalent to 10 to the exponent of c, which is the answer. And our c in this case is the power, which is 4. For those, if you're doing mathematics, this must be somehow uh, related to what you've been doing in mathematics on logarithms there and exponents. I think uh, that part uh, can actually help you there. All right, anyways, uh, let us see what you're going to have as our final answer. This is a fraction because you know that any number can be written off as over one. So that allows us to cross multiply. So by cross multiplying is going to be one times P out which is P out is equal to 2,4 times 10 to the power minus 3 is going to multiply 10 to the power 4. So that one, you can even use your calculator to do that. Okay, so let's see our calculator. Uh, it's 2,4 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Whatever that you're going to have, we multiply to 10 to the power. This is a cross multiplication. These two, they will multiply each other, which is times 10 to the power of 4. So you're going to multiply by 10 to the power of 4 which is 24 watts. Remember this is power. So your power is 24 watts. 
But that is not what you are asked. This is the output power. Why are we calculating the output power? Because we are supposed to have the output voltage here. We are supposed to have the output voltage. All right. So we actually understand that whenever we are given uh, power and resistance and voltage, which formula we're going to use. So I'm just going to take this part here. We have got E impedance, which is the resistance and the voltage. How do you calculate power? That is the question that you're supposed to ask yourself now. All right, so I'm just gonna do this so that at least it can help us to work out something here. I'm gonna to use this part here. All right, we understand that power from voltage and resistance is equivalent to V squared over R. So this is output voltage and output impedance. So there we can just substitute our values because the output power is there is 24 watts. So you're going to substitute here 24 watts is equivalent to V squared, which is the one that we need over the in output impedance and the output impedance is 10 ohms, that one of a speaker. So calculate V out, this is a fraction. So you can cross multiply just like what we did previously. So by cross multiplying it's one times V naught squared, which is V naught squared is equal to 24 times 10, which is 240. So to remove the square, definitely have to introduce square root from your mathematical skills there. We understand the opposite or the removal of a square. You introduce the square root both sides. So that means we can have the V naught, which is our V out. So V out is going to be the square root of 240, but we can simplify that on our calculator and see what exactly is the answer. The square root of 240 is going to give us 15,4 15,4919, which is 15,492. Okay, so you're gonna have 15,492 volts. This is voltage, so it's supposed to be measured in volts. So that was the 6.3 part. As you can see, yes, it was a stretching question because it needed you to calculate something from gain, and from that gain, you calculate exactly what you're supposed to be, you what you are, what you're being asked to calculate. So these are typical questions, how they look like. Uh, so you're supposed to be used to these questions. How do you get used? Work more question papers, guys. That is the only medicine that we have. All right, uh, let us uh, see the question seven. As I said, we are going to find, we are going to do the question six and seven in this platform. So the question seven now we are given on 7.1 to draw a neat labeled block diagram of a complete Servo system that is five marks. Take note, this is a block diagram. So if I do not see these on your answers, then it means actually your answer is wrong because those are what you actually refer to as a block diagram. Okay. Anyways, uh, let's see how it's going to look like. That's our servo uh system that we have. So you've got uh the input here, the error detection, the load, the servo controller. Uh, that is for you to obtain five marks if you are able to indicate everything in this manner. So take note also the direction of the arrows, how they are linked, and also the, the, the labeling part, know your controller, know your load, know your error detection. You can actually obtain full marks for, for doing that. Okay, then the 7.2 is graphically illustrate the principle of Lenz's law by using the transformer principle on which a synchro and servo mechanism operate. So we need a graphical illustration. So that is what we have on 7.2. So we are going to have, uh, that's our uh, lens law. So we've got the direction of the primary field, the input that we have. So remember, can, uh, okay, I, actually, I do not have something that I can present using my hands, how it's supposed to be, but that's the direction of current, how it's going to be look like to so the output, then the direction of the secondary magne uh, ma magnet, uh, that is a magnetic field that we have there. So to make uh, a total of five marks, as we can see. So that is actually what you needed in this part to, uh, to have a total of five marks. So guys, I actually advise you to work on more questions, guys. We are about to write, we have got our exams ahead of time. Work on more question papers, more revisions that can actually help you to answer any typical question that you can think of. So that's it, guys, from Amazon African Motives, working on industrial electronics and two, till we meet again.